I'll turn it towards you. All right. Hello and welcome to Live in Murfreesboro. I'm Gabriel Fancher, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Murfreesboro, What's Bill happening? Wilson. How are you doing? Hi, man? buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Man, I am. I mean, like, you're sixth generation Murfreesboro. Yes, yeah, so we're right. right five yeah. or six generation. You know, when I first moved to town, I remember telling people that this was my home. And, like, I told Bob Mifflin that. And he said, you know, you really can't really say you're from here until you've been here for about 180 years or right, so. And right. so you are I, from I, here. I'm from here, but there's pe people here that have been here a lot longer than I have. <laughs> now, I've got an old family cemetery up in Mil uh, Carthage, Smith okay. County, in Sullivan's Bend. What's up, Brent Long? <laughs> and uh, it, it, it goes back to people being born in the 1750s. Wow. So, so your but people have been here for a while. In the Middle Tennessee area, yeah. been here since when it was the t uh, city or the t mm, state of Franklin, I guess. Sure. But, yeah. But wow. as far as being in Murfreesboro, people like Brick Murphy, whose family, right. Hardy Murphy, uh, a lot. There's a lot of people here that have been longer. <laughs> Steve Prim's another one. There's a whole bunch of them that uh, have been here longer, but. You know, Mr. Murfreesboro, the original Mr. Murfreesboro was a guy by the name of Tommy Martin. Okay. And he was a big business leader around here. He worked, and some of y'all might know Hunter McFarland, that Hunter and Dr. Bryn Martin, who's a history professor, or he's a doctor of history, opening tissue, who I grew up with. Their grandfather was Tommy Martin, okay. who was really an advocate and ambassador for Murfreesboro back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. 70s and mm -hmm. he was known put to you this way murfreesboro wouldn't look the way it does without tommy martin mr murfreesboro he helped bring companies here like state farm wow uh ge which is no longer here but at one time they had 1100 1200 maybe more employees there that right. affected the community sure um chroma locks which is right right across the street here the boys and girls club used to be chrome locks where i worked one time and i worked at ge oh wow but um anyway he he helped bring companies like that and he was known from you know he was known as he was literally known as mr murfreesboro because the city council declared him. him mr murfreesboro and before i started mr murfreesboro facebook i uh, went to hunter where you have like ten thousand followers well, i've got like all together, if we include Instagram and all this, it's like 25,000. Wow. Just on Facebook, it's 15,000. Uh, and I, it's funny, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> Meredith uh, and I always talk about it's. I can be in Florida, I could be somewhere, and somebody comes up to me, hey, it's Mr. Murfreesboro. They want their picture made. I sure. Autograph. So it's kind of taking. My wife on. said I have to get a selfie with you, or I call right. them ussies. <laughs> ussies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll most definitely do that. In fact, we did a uh, rate to succeed and raised about. She raised a little bit more money than I did, but yeah. But you pushed her. I pushed her. Yeah. It was there at the end. Mama <laughs> came in and wrote a check. <laughs> you saw it. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> she also had, that's on you, girl. Yeah, she's probably watching. This. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But no, what a great outfit Ray to succeed is. And I no sit doubt. on the board for that. Um, back to Tommy Martin. I went to Hunter, took him to lunch at B. McNeil's, at then B. McNeil's, and said, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a Facebook page called Mr. Murfreesboro. And I want your, I'm not going to do it unless you say it's okay. Of course, <laughs> I'll put him on, so I'm going to buy your lunch. Too. <laughs> right, right. He said, man, I think it'd be great because Tommy, Mr. Martin and my grandfather, Bill Wilson, were dear friends. Okay. So it made it easier. There's some generational love there. In sure. other words, we go down generations of family knowing each other. So yeah. anyway, that's how it got started nearly four four years ago or so. Four years ago. Four, okay. A little over four. Never going on five. And it's taken off. I mean, really? Well, you know? yes, it has. And it's funny. Uh, You've got a lot of people that complain about Murfreesboro. And you know as well as I sure. do, there's other sites out there. But a lot of them complain right now. And I was talking to the mayor not too long ago about having to raise the taxes. Right. But people don't realize a lot of the reason the taxes are going up is because if you've moved here in the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. when I was a kid growing up here in the 70s, there was 30, maybe 35,000 people that lived in the city. Right. It's like a, a little bit. Yeah. That's right. Now there's 130 to 150,000 in the city. 
And still moving here. Still moving here. I forget how many are moving here daily. Been a realtor for the last 20 years. Right. Um, so you've got people moving here. Why do they move here? That's why I was bringing you on so you can talk about Because uh, <laughs> education. We have the, well, probably the nicest and the cheapest. I hate to say cheap, but NTSU, which I Great was, value. I was there for right. eight years. Wow. And your PhD and, no, I got an undergraduate. No? Okay. And uh, took six I went, for my undergraduate. I went through two presidents. <laughs> and I have uh, three siblings that all went to MTSU. One of them graduated in four years, one three years, one five years, me eight years. <laughs> and my dad and mother were good friends with the Ingrams, who were Sam and Ingram and his wife. And okay. they, always, they played bridge together. And Dr. Ingram would look at my father whose name was Floyd Wilson. He was like one of the first state farm agents here in town. Dr. Ingram would look at Floyd and goes, Floyd, when, when's Bill going to graduate? <laughs> I mean, how, how that made them feel like, oh, not good. And then I went through Dr. James Walker. So I was there long enough for two presidents. Wow. And at the end, when you, when you graduate, they have degrees called cum laude, magnum cum laude. They had a degree for me. It was called, Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Walker started that. But nice. you'll hear him. If he was alive today, he'd always say that. Thank you, Lon. For and the he's who the library is named after, right? Uh, the James Walker Library. Yeah, I believe so. But yeah. you know, going back to why people want to live in Murfreesboro, we have a great school. I think it's a, a variety of things. It's our we have so many different types of people. Mm -hmm. If you want a. Uh, I mean, we've got all sorts of, we've got great schools, public schools, private schools. You're not too far from Webb. you got Middle Tennessee Christian School. you got Providence Christian Academy. you got St. Rose for the Catholics. You've got, uh, as far as places to worship, Church of Christ. you got Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. We even have a mosque, uh, temples, any type of religion. That's true. That's true. Or, and it's here. And we're only 25 minutes. From Nashville, right? Great proximity of Nashville. Your your location, and I, I always hear people say location, location, location. The mobility to get to the Gulf Coast up north, east to west, you've got to come either through Murfreesboro or, or close by because of 440, 840, 40, 65, 24. If you take a pen and put it on uh, the center of Murfreesboro, which Murfreesboro is the center of the state, that's right. You draw a circle around Murfreesboro and go 500 miles. I learned this from the Chamber of Commerce. Shout out to Stephanie Brackman, my son's mother. <laughs> well, anyway, you go out 500 miles, go around the circle around Murfreesboro, and you're within a day's drive right. of 75% of the U.S. population. So, Schools, mobility, places to worship, uh, places to shop. I mean... Uh, Recreation, you're close to lakes. Uh, you're, it's the cost of living is not much, you know, not much, but uh, the people who live here that complain are the ones that moved here the last 10 or 15 years <laughs> about the traffic. Sure. Because when they, when they moved here, it was a secret. It was a <laughs> right, secret. Right. Kind of like yeah. Pete's Grove, Tennessee. Everybody wants to be the last one, yeah. you know, to the but, door. Yeah, but they were the ones that complained, and the reason they had to raise the taxes is because the ones that moved here. I mean, but why sure. are you moving here if you don't? Right. I'm a realtor, by the way, if you want to, <laughs> if you want right. to move out. Yeah. But uh, I love Murfreesboro. It's been good to my family. Have I, you ever been tempted to leave? I lived in Hilton Head. South Carolina one summer. Okay. Because of a bad relationship, a bad breakup. I had to get out of town. All right. Well, the, it, they were running off. I had, to, I had to leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I have not, you know, my girlfriend, she lived in New York City for six years. And coming back home, where she's from, yeah. her family, would be like probably hitting the guts, like, wow, well, you know, I'm moving back to Murfreesboro. But really, I call it a Norman Rockwell town. We have the history of the Stones River Battle, right. the, the Battle of Murfreesboro. A lot of people don't realize it was the seventh bloodiest battle of the of the Civil War. Yeah, and there was nearly a hundred thousand troops here. Bloodiest man. hours. Of yes. the Civil War. Right? Yes, I forget what the Very ratios intense, were, yeah. but there was tw nearly twenty three to twenty four thousand casualties. They didn't all die. There was like five or six thousand deaths mm -hmm. where the avenue is. Right. Where the hospital is. 
And of course, the battlefields, I think four to 600 acres, really it sat on about 2,500 acres, something like that. And I may be right. wrong, Jim Lewis can correct me. Where New Vision Baptist, where I go to church, that was a part of the battlefield. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the decisive battle. Lincoln, people don't realize this, President Lincoln was, the South was kind of kicking the North's butt. They were up there now, you know, the, the, the first few battles, the South was kicking butt and getting north towards Washington. Lincoln was like, man, we got to get a win. We got to have a W here. It's not looking good for the home team. It started, people can argue that the, the, the war turned. The war, war turned at the Battle of Murfreesboro after the Battle of Murfreesboro went on to the Tullahoma campaign through Chattanooga and then Sherman's march to the sea through Atlanta. Sure. Where they just went and burnt everything. Right, right. And I've got a lot of friends. Luckily, I had a great, great grandfather. A, it was, it was A.P. Um, Altman who fought out of Arkansas. I've got his picture, his role. And then I had a Wilson on my dad's side, a great, great, who fought out of Kentucky. People think just because you're Kentucky, you're from the South or Mississippi. There, there were soldiers who went from Mississippi who fought for the Union. That's right. Sure. People don't get that. No. They so don't. they kind of deserted their homeland. And slavery is wrong. Slavery is wrong. It's always been wrong. I mean, it's biblical, and we're all enslaved to something, whether you're in recovery, not recovery. Amen. <laughs> if you're addicted to pills or whatever, we're all enslaved to something. So but my point is slavery is wrong. But a lot of the Southerners said, hey, it's states' rights. Why are these Northerners coming down here invading us? Well, you could – it was over slavery, but it's also some states' rights involved there. And um, – Banking issues. I mean, oh, there was there's a, a whole, whole bunch. You don't go to war over just We had the thing, generals. You know? The South had the generals. And I always told people that I was going, I'm, I'm a winner, okay? <laughs> not, nothing, and I'm not a Trumper or whatever, but I would, being that I had both sides of the family, and they actually fought against each other at Shiloh and Chickamauga. So wow. I had, they fought. Brother against, against brother. Well, it was my great great grandfather on dad's side, great great grandfather on my mom's side. They fought oh, wow. at Shiloh, which is a, a bloody battle, mm -hmm. in Chickamauga. So, you know, it unfortunately there's a lot of people in the South who still think it's going. I mean, there are people who there's a lot of prejudice, and you know, it's time. I think it's time for this nation to heal, even with all, everything that's going on. We're a divided nation. Let's just face it, and you can argue both ways what is right is right what is wrong is wrong um but the battle of Murfreesboro was the beginning of the end for the south on sure. to on to uh telahoma and the battle of hoover's gap what a, it was just like a skirmish but the first repeat rifle and the history of warfare the spencer repeat rifle was used off exit 97 really? at the corner of coffee bedford and rutherford county uh, I yeah, Hoover's guy. Yeah, wow. there's a guy from Pittsburgh who spent his own money and gave, well, he, he gave his own money and time and came up with this uh, uh, Spencer repeating rifle. Because think about it, when we first started, it's minute men, and this is for all the guns rights people. You hit, it took a minute. What do they call my minute? It took a minute to load the dirt thing. By the sure. time you're doing this, you're getting shot between the eyes. With the Spencer repeating rifle, they put a cartridge with either, I don't know how many, if it was seven bullets, 12, 14, but they had a cartridge and you could fire just instead of having to reload, mini ball, gun pad, all that stuff. So that really was a, a you know, the, the Yankees, the, the North had the industry, they had the iron, they had the metal, they had more men, but we, the South had the generals like Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yes. Uh, Robert E. Lee, um, different with Stonewall Jackson, who got shot by his own people. They shot his own, I mean, I know, I know. <laughs> it's awful. Bad luck. Bad luck. But Murfreesboro is a great place to live. I mean, if you if you look down the square, mm -hmm. that's, that's one of, I think, two or three pre-Civil War courthouses that's still, uh, still standing. Right. Or, uh, it was built way before like 1859 i think it burnt and then um uh, you know murfreesboro's had tornadoes here we had the tornado of 1913 that killed two or three people we had a tornado of 1997 which hit the south ridge and then the tornado of 2010 on the good friday 
right. which killed, you know, a, a, a mom and a child, a friend of mine's wife and baby, but um, it's awful. Mm-hmm. So not only do we have good things, we've got bad things, but the bad things about tornadoes, destruction, is then you have to rebuild. Mm-hmm. We rebuild, and uh, which creates jobs. So it's not always, there's always something good that comes out of something bad. But uh, you got any questions for me? What do, <laughs> I always have questions for you. So what do you, what do, you do uh, for fun around here? Well, you're a tennis player. I played, I helped start a tennis league that was called, it's called the 50 plus OK Tennis League. <laughs> and you have to be at least 50 or you, you can't be any good at it. <laughs> it's one of you. It gives me an advantage. <laughs> sure, that. sure. And we play on Monday nights, and we usually play from like March to September, something like that. Any group, everybody's welcome. It's at the Adams Tennis Complex on Monday nights from seven to whenever. We okay. play outdoors, so if it's above fifty, we're playing. Uh, the reason I chose Monday was the fact that nobody looks forward to Monday. And it gets us closer to the weekend. <laughs> One Who looks closer. forward to Monday? Do you look forward? Nobody I know that really looks forward to Mondays. Getting back in the grind. I know you. <laughs> I'm addicted work. to work, man. So, you, you, oh, okay. Right, right, call so, me a liar. Right, so no, you, well, you know, you work. You know, getting to the gym. There's a lot of people like to go. I mean, I, I work sure. out by going to the mailbox. <laughs> so, but man, you're pretty active. You play I do tennis. a lot. I got people say, "Do you still sell real estate?" And Yes, I do. Real estate has been good to me through, you know. Why did you get into it? Well, who, who talked you into it? Well, I hate to say that. I hate to give them a shout out. Actually, I beat him in the uh, John Jones. Was he running? Me. Yesterday? He ran yesterday, yeah. and I actually beat him. And you beat him? I beat him like six minutes. Of course, I was walking most of the time, so <laughs> I think maybe he, he was walking too. But a great guy, he's the one that got me into okay. it. Okay. We'd always run to each other at uh, – at a quick sack or wherever, and he was like, Bill, why don't you come in and start selling? I had been working the ADT security. Did that for seven years, and then John recruited, you know, he had started a team, and I helped start that team, and that's who really re- recruited me and been doing it ever since in different, you know, I helped Keller Williams start mm-hmm. in 2005 in their infancy, not really started, but within the first year, first six months, and I've always been there in the beginning of stuff, and then for some reason, I'll leave. Move on. Move on. But um, with Parks now, great company, Bob Parks, just, you know, a legend. Yes. A legend who, uh, not only about the business legend, but he he really gives back to the community. We've got a thing coming up, uh, Christmas for the children. He does that every year. Um, the, the Frosty Run, I think it's coming up. That is. Is it the Frosty Run? It's at the Country Club, and I think all the proceeds goes to the children for Christmas. And uh, just a great guy. And it's, it's a healthy. great run, like the Frosty. Yeah, run, because you get out you. there on the the Stones River Country Club. You know, the, 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 the car path. path. Yeah, the car path. It's a great run. I know. So. I got to use the golf cart last year. And they asked me to look. No I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> setting the pace. Yeah, <laughs> I'm setting the pace at three miles an hour. But I think that's a Two mile race, something like that. They, I think they have two different courses you can take. So there's a two miler, and then there's one that's a little bit longer. Yeah, so. yeah. It's a great. A lot of you know the Battle of Murfreesboro was right there with the country. That's line. right. Sure. There's still places where you can see where the cannons were set up. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't realize that. And I'm big into metal detecting. I want to give a, a shout out to my friends, the Dig Dogs, uh, Tim Henderson, Ron Reed. These guys go out on weekends. And I just go out and watch them, and they'll probably put a bullet in there and let me dig it up. And say, hey, man, you're <laughs> doing look great. You look what you yeah. found. It's a belt buckle. <laughs> but I've got a lot of relatives who have a lot of old houses here. My first cousin, Carrie Norton Beatty, who's married to Charlie Beatty, and they have a daughter named Liza. What's up if y'all are watching? They live in the oldest house in Mother County, out in Blackman, the old Beatty, Manson, Blackman house. It was built in 1807. And they own the, the last 40 acres of that homestead. Wow. And sometimes we melt the tape there. Uh, a lot, a lot, I just love history. Sure. A lot of history. Yeah. And uh, Springfield is right down the street from there. It's an apartment complex now that was built in like 1809. And it was the Smith Washington family. Some of Bart Smith's family was there in, uh, the Washington family, it was built in 1809, 
and there was a two brothers who were coming down through here, and they st they they stayed there on the way to the Battle of New Orleans. Okay. To meet up with Andrew Jackson. Wow. So they go down and meet with Andy, and um, they go down there and fight. And then on the way back, they stop again at Spring. They knew where it was because back then we didn't have train trains in the early 1800s. Right. They didn't really come around to you know 1840s or 50s, but they stayed there and they met two daughters, and they married them. Huh. And then started a family there at Springfield. Okay. I thought that was kind of neat. That is neat. But that house is still there. And there's legend that has it. Uh, Lyle Jennings, his family owned it. And Mrs. Jennings, they used to own the Jennings Tire. Mrs. Jennings was doing mashed potatoes at the in the kitchen, looking out the window. And she heard a voice go, Elizabeth. There was nobody in the house. Okay. And they say she was frantic and she put a robe on with mashed potatoes and she drove up to Jennings Tire and was just like from to, hearing something. to her husband, it was like somebody in there. So upstairs there's blood. It was used as a hospital during the Battle of Stones River. I've seen it. Okay. I've got pictures of it on the Mr. Murphy's bro, but just history like that. People driving by, they have no idea. No, the right. avenue was sure. A battlefield, I mean. Right. So it's pretty wild. And the and the celebrities that have lived here, um, Doug Douglas MacArthur, General MacArthur's wife, Jean Faircloth, was from mm -hmm. Murfreesboro. Right. She lived to be like a hundred and one or two, and her house was over off Lytle somewhere. And it was a fraternity house one time, but they, they tore it down and I built a doctor's office there. She moved to the Waldorf Astoria in New York City and lived to be 101 or two. They had a parade for Douglas MacArthur right after the Korean conflict. I think it was either 1950 or 51. They picked him up, I think, in Smyrna, in Smyrna and then brought him down here at the courthouse. And, and then he had a Rolls Royce convertible. He, Gene, and their little kid, their little son, not little, little sons <laughs> in the back. It goes around the square and supposedly coming down Main Street, the Rolls Royce broke down like in front of Central Christian Church at the corner of Manning, Maine. Oh, MacArthur wasn't too happy. You know, he'd been under fighting the sure. Filipinos or the Ch Ch Chinese or whatever, but he had subordinates and people pushed that Rolls Royce down Main Street over to some parking lot somewhere over in MTSU. He gave a speech over there at the football field and then. I mean, who who ever thought that that the general would be here and then his car break down? I thought that was <laughs> sure. And then supposedly uh, Judy Garland's family, the Gums, from out Manchester Highway, Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But I grew up here, man. I grew up in the seventies. Like I said, it was like thirty thousand people, and now there's one hundred thirty thousand. So Murphy's Brook really has been good to my family. My mom's family were farmers, educated farmers. Mm -hmm. My dad's family was very poor, but they were hardworking. Um, granddad was a sheriff in the 50s and the 60s, and he was a road superintendent in the 70s. And dad was like the chairman of the county court, which later would become the county executive, county mayor in the late 70s, early 80s. So as a kid, I grew up at the workhouse, the courthouse, in the jail and i was the kid going around door to door saying hey vote for my dad vote for my granddad sure. and that's where i became a salesman as and a, you you studied political science at, at mtsu, MTSU. How, how come you've never gotten into oh, well, you, have you run for anything i, have I, not I couldn't run. find no, any record of it no i haven't run I, you know i've thought about it but man i just like being on this side of it. you like to be a journal i'm not a journalist i like telling stories sometimes they're true no <laughs> but they try to be true and i, I always you know it, it's just everybody has a story whether you're in sure. the white house or you live under a bridge mm -hmm. there's reason you got there so but everybody has a story you know it doesn't matter if we're republican democrat libertarian <laughs> You're, if you're white, you're black, you're a man, you're a woman, you're a shim, whatever. Uh, everybody has a story, and you know I think we're all children of God. And it's people like, forget that. Yeah, right? I think uh, in this in the political environment we're in now, people forget that sometimes, and that's a shame. Like Elvis used to say, 
Gabriel, you would uh, Elvis. Who stayed in Murfreesboro? Who, uh, yeah, and I saw him right. in concert when I was nine. Wow. He didn't give me a scarf. <laughs> I didn't ask for one. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I. Uh, it's just amazing. El, El, you know, Elvis stayed here. He had a recording studio out Salem Highway. Oh, I didn't know that. Where Brother McCullough's own house, it was called Boxwood. Okay. And it was a pre-Civil War house. And there was a pool house over there. And I used to go out there when I when I was younger. Brother and I hung out a lot. And we double dated. And we'd go out to his house. And uh, Elvis supposedly recorded some music there. Huh. And it was through the Perrymans who owned, who, I don't know if they owned WGNS or they had something to do with WGNS. And they would, uh, they helped bring Elvis here. Wow. And they moved to Texas. And I think they passed away not too long ago. But he had a studio, and Elvis, yeah, he would come to Murfreesboro, and people probably didn't know it, other than if you saw him on stage. Sure. But he was also coming here to do some recording and stuff like that. Wow. Hanging out. But, um, you know, it's Murfreesboro is a great place, and I can't say any, anything bad about it. People complain about the roads. That may be one thing. But you know, we could be could be Detroit. It could be some other city that doesn't have the jobs. That's right. And that's what drives the economy is the is the jobs. But you know, maybe we'll get some more jobs here, uh, white collar jobs. I mean, I always think, well, where would we be without Nissan? Where would Rutherford County be? We wouldn't be wouldn't Rutherford be Rutherford County exactly. Nissan. Um, so we've got a great uh, job force here. We got a great chamber of commerce. We've got. I mean, you name it, places to worship, schools, places to shop, places to recreate, you know, lakes, go to the mountains. I mean, you're close to everything. Short drive. Mobility. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, it, it's been a great place. I have a son who's 19. He's a sophomore at MTSU, William. He's doing really good. Uh, but, no, I did not. I had, you know, politics, I always wanted to get involved. I grew up in it. And my great uncle was an attorney down in Jacksonville, Florida. His name was William Rogers. That's okay. My name's William Rogers Wilson. And uh, he was Walt, one of Walt Disney's personal attorneys. Wow. He bought all the land, the swamp land down in Orlando back mm -hmm. in the 50s. Maybe it's in the 50s. For Walt, when he started the concept of Walt Disney, is it Disney World or Disneyland? That's Disney World. Okay. And I would go visit. We would go visit um, Uncle Bud in Jacksonville. I just knew he had all those ladders in his office. I would climb. I was the kid climbing up. Get down from there. Um, but uh, I was going to be an attorney. I still may go get my. It's not too late. We almost got a law school at MTSU. We need one. Yeah, what if, oh, we, Judge we Bragg do. went. Uh, Judge David Bragg in the Bragg family. You're talking about old Murphy's bro right there. Mm -hmm. uh, got his law degree and became a judge you know, later in life. So. I thought about it, and we got a good judicial system here. I mean, uh, really uh, great judges. Um, some of my dear friends, like Judge Barry Tittle, Judge Lisa Ishan, uh, just just good people. I agree. Um, so, did you? I ran the Burrow Dash yesterday. I think we talked about this. I am so sore. <laughs> and then ran in the 60th. I played football in the 60th annual annual Turkey Bowl against like 30 year olds and there may be some younger ones but i am not a whippersnapper a little, a little worn out i'm sore that. i'm probably gonna have sure. to rotator cuff <laughs> surgery but man i need to have you you know our co-host edwin lee Raymer show right i wanted to nights. plug that yeah and uh, to ed that. you're listening here's our next guest maybe sunday night but uh we we have a big time we have uh we've had grammy award winners you guys have some really good people come on that show man, we have We've had authors on, speakers of the house, people, governors. We've had people running for governor. We've had, uh, you name it. And people can stream that through WGNS. Yeah, or, or they can Mr. Murphy's Park. Yeah. And then you shoot live yeah. from Mr. Murphy's Park. And I'm going to have a website coming out shortly. And oh, I'm going to get that mrmurfreesboro.com. That'll be coming out soon. You'll be able to go on there and okay. read stories, look at pictures. And a lot of the stuff I get, some of it is firsthand. A lot of it's stuff where I Google or I imagine ask people come to you, right? They come yeah, to they story. come to me, and then I've got friends who I go to, and I need to do a better job of giving them credit. 
Um, because Mr. Murphy's World is not the only show out there. Well, but it is the only Mr. Murphy's World, and it is one of the. You won it's the Ruthies last last, last two years. Let me say this, and then we'll. Why well, deducts? I've got eleven o'clock, but um, I know I, I, hey, I gotta let you go. I called my friends down at the DNJ. I called Britain. What's left? Okay. I say, Brittany, you know, you've got like 3,000 uh, things for Ruthie Award. Mm -hmm. I say, how come there's not one? She didn't know it was me. I said, how come there's not a social media? She goes, who is this? I said, it's Mr. Murphy's World. <laughs> you go. Yeah. You know, Created you your do? own I, well, division. It is. I kind of created this whole thing, this public figure, which is good, but I need... Uh, I haven't really thought about cashing in. Or well, how do you monetize it, right? That's yeah, and that's and uh, Tommy Davidson's always giving me a hard time about that, and John Jones. But uh, it's okay. It brings cheer to people. People love it, man. Sure. I can't tell you enough. It brings cheer and joy to their hearts, which makes me feel good. So. Anyway, there you have it, man. Man, I really appreciate you coming in and spending time with me. I've learned a lot about Murfreesboro. And, you know, I've been here a little over 10 years now. So yeah. I'm one of those recent, you know, people. I'm one, I'm one of those Where guys did you recently planning. come from? I'm from Kentucky originally. My grandmother was born in Mayfield, Kentucky. Mayfield. That's I'm, west. That's right. western. That's Where, right. What part of Kentucky? I'm from uh, Mammoth Cave area. Mammoth Cave. Yeah, I was a cave guy. That's Corbin, was, Somerset. Now, Corbin, you're going out east there. It's like Glasgow, Glasgow. Horse Cave, right up 65. What about London? London's, that's where, uh, that's where KFC. Yeah, exactly. But that's way out on the east. You know, he didn't get successful until he was 66. I Gives think. guys like me hope. Well, exactly. Know, right? I'm thinking about it. Well, look yeah. at Trump. I've got I mean, time. How many times he's been bankrupt? I mean, the thing is, keep trying. <laughs> that's right. Keep that's trying. trying. Keep trying. Man, I appreciate you having me on. Man, um, it's, it's my And honor. I'd like to have For you sure. on. I'm going to ask you to be on our. Uh, anytime. Uh, Just let me know. Thanks, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate that.